you guys. I'm going to make it quick today. There has been a theme going on with many of my dual clients that I want to address, and that is on being fat and being pregnant. And fat is not a bad word. Fat is a beautiful word. You can be fit in fat. You can be healthy in fat. You can be gorgeous in fat. You can be loved in fat. You can be pregnant in fat. Our culture and our society is so fat phobic. I don't even know what to do with it. But here is what I know as a birth doula and the conversation that I find myself having over and over again with my private clients that I want to share or give to you today if you need to hear this message. It doesn't matter how much weight you gain in your pregnancy. I personally gained 70 pounds. I was fit. I was pregnant. I was fat. I was healthy. And I was sexy. And it was an amazing pregnancy with a 70 pound weight gain. I had an almost 11 pound baby. And yes, I birthed him out of my vagina. I understand medically some of the things that they will tell you about weight gain and the health of your placenta and gestational diabetes. But what I know for certain is that weight gain and being fat and being healthy, like these are not black and white terms. It is really important that you're nourishing your body, that you're choosing nutritious foods that you are focused on hydration and electrolytes and green leafy vegetables and iron and folate. You can also have all the other things that you want to have. All of our bodies are different. We're sized differently. We're made uniquely. We're made beautifully. And so I need you to hear this. When you go to your prenatal appointments and if they ask you to get on a scale, that you ask them, hey, could you share with me why you are collecting data on my weight? Why is that important? What are you looking for as you weigh me over the course of my pregnancy? And what I have found in my research and my experience is that They are looking for trends with amniotic fluid and fluid retention on your body. So if you are tracking at a certain percentage and then all of the sudden your weight goes up, let's say seven pounds in one week, that might be medically a red flag for something like polyhydramniosis, like excess amniotic fluid. It may be something with gestational hypertension or preeclampsia or HELP syndrome. It could be an indicator of something like cardiomyopathy or heart failure, right? Significant fluid retention, water retention, which holds weight, would be something to be on alert for, okay? But outside of that, just, just gaining weight, being pregnant, being fit, being healthy, being fat, that's that's normal. You are beautiful. You are capable. You are loved. You can get into a squat. You can move your body. Please do not let other people make you hyper obsessed or focused on the scale. Here's my own boundary that I used that maybe will serve you. I recovered from disordered eating through my high school and college years. I had a pretty severe eating disorder. So exercise bulimia, disordered eating, anorexia, like I feel like you name it, I tried it on as far as eating disorders go. And when I was recovered and I became pregnant, like getting on the scale was going to be very triggering. Like I just told you I gained 70 pounds. So at some point I learned 
how much weight I had gained, but I really wasn't interested in in that number. Here's what I did and what I encouraged my clients to do and you to do. When you go to the provider and you ask them that question, why are you collecting my weight? You get information from them. I suggest that you go on the scale backwards if you consent to get on the scale. Did you know that you could not get on the scale? Like you could actually like give informed refusal and say, I don't feel like weighing today. That doesn't feel safe for me. You can get on the scale backwards and I say out loud, I have recovered from disordered eating. The number on the scale doesn't serve me. I don't want you to put it in my chart. I don't want to be able to see it. I don't want it to be on my discharge papers. You can need to black it out in order to keep me safe emotionally. If at any point you feel like there is a red flag about my weight, as in like excessive fluid retention, and you would be concerned, then we don't need to have a discussion about my weight. We need to have a discussion about what you are concerned about. That conversation feels so safe to me. And if you find yourself in a situation where you're speaking to a provider that isn't receiving that need of yours, girl, you're with the wrong provider. Time to switch. I'm going to go back to a story. In September, I had a client named Stephanie Lover. This happened. She was not fat. She was just fit. She was like fit and muscular and healthy and exercising every day and swimming and eating such nutritious food. And like, I mean, maybe she gained around 30 pounds or something and she was being shamed for it at her provider. Unnecessary, uncalled for, disrespectful. Like if your provider is putting their own shit on you, like time to leave. So we switched practices at 36 weeks gestation to a practice that was very loving and looked at her as an individual and was like, oh my goodness, like you are so healthy. You are so strong. You are so athletic. You have gained a perfect amount of weight and there doesn't seem to be any swelling or fluid retention. Like set those boundaries in place. If you can't set them, switch providers. This goes out to all of you mamas out there that are caring, that are insecure, uncomfortable about these conversations. You're proud of your body and your growing body and you're embracing these new curves and the way that your belly is changing and you're growing a human inside of me. Inside of me, listen, I'm not growing a human inside of me. You growing a human inside of you. I am done with those days. <laughs> I just really want to encourage you guys today to have those conversations. Speak up, advocate, use your voice, set those boundaries, get on that scale backwards. Ask them questions. Why, 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 why about everything? Don't allow yourself to just be herded through mindlessly where you have no idea why they're doing what and what it's for and what it means and what are the pros and the cons and the risks and the benefits and what does your intuition say about it. Speak up. Use your voice. Ask questions. Get educated. Get empowered. You can do this. As we leave today, I want everybody to turn on some Lizzo. I don't know. Get in your bra and underwear, get naked, look at your body in the mirror, affirm for yourself. I am beautiful. I am loved. I am special. I am caring. Baby, I am growing life. And if you're fat, you are beautiful. And remind yourself of that, that everybody has different size toes and feet and ankles and bodies right? Everyone has different color, hair, and texture. We are all different. We are all unique. So you get into that mirror today and you look into your own eyes and you say that out loud. I am beautiful. These curves are special. I am so thankful for this body. I am proud of this body. I am gaining weight. I am doing well. And this is a healthy pregnancy. Focus on your nutrition and your hydration. Do not focus on a number on a scale. Okay? I love you guys. I hope you have a great day, and I hope that this little chat serves you. 
And if you know someone who's pregnant, who's struggling with this, I hope you'll share this episode with them. See you soon. Oh, actually, I'll see you back on Thursday. I'm going to give a quick shout out. I interviewed Abby Rose Green of the Herself podcast about carrying a baby with Down syndrome and that special and unique journey. And so I hope you'll tune in on Thursday while Abby and I cry our faces off at this beautiful birth story of her son, Owen, with Down syndrome. Thanks for being with the Birth Story Podcast. Chat soon. Mm-hmm.